go through a couple of options for texturing a model. So applying a texture over a large scale to avoid tiling. Um, I've got two options. So one will work in 2020, 2021, 3ds Max. One will work in 2022, 3ds Max. Um, you can use the 2021 version in 2022, but with the newer version of Max, there are just some new OSL options, which will vary the way that we texture the model. And we'll just come to our material editor, and I've just got a basic physical material for one of the Max ones applied to the model. What we can do is apply a um, a bitmap or a texture image to the um, base color input and that will um, project this as a texture over the model so I'm going to take this put it into the base color map and you can see that immediately it's applied to the model but we're getting some weird projections on all sides so to overcome that we can just come to our modify stack and on top of the model put a UVW map, which will define the projection up here. And instead of planar, so as if we were just a plane from the sky over the model, let's apply it as a box. And then if we even out the length width and height parameters, it will be even on all sides. So now we're getting some even tiles. I can also, within the bitmap, adjust the tiling here so it scales down even smaller. I'll uh, just increase the amount of tiles. So now we're getting something like this. We want to, you can already see that we're getting some reflections from our model. So we just want to come into our physical material and take the roughness value right up so we're not getting those reflections anymore. So I can use Active Shade to test out how this is looking. And it's okay, but we just have these tiles showing up, um, which is partly because of the, the image that I'm using, but over a large scale, you usually get some kind of a result like this. So to overcome this, uh, what we wanna do is take two versions of the, um, of the texture and layer them over each other um, with some variation. And then later we can also mix in a color into the mix. So instead of using a physical material, what we want to choose is a blend material, which will take two different materials and blend them together according to a mask. So let's apply that material to the model. And then we'll set a color to each of these to show what's happening. Uh, sorry, just as a base color. So we have two different colors, but when we do, so to test out the blend, we'll need to use our active shade. You can see that only one of those uh, materials is showing through because we don't have a mask yet. So for a mask, let's use a map. We'll choose an um, OSL noise, and then let's apply that to the mask. Uh, and then again, using our active shade, we'll see that we're starting to get some mixing of those two colors. And then we just wanna play with the parameters to see how the texture will be mixing. So we can reduce the scale, bring that down. And then the steps here will define how much contrast there is. So let's take it to something like this and do another test. Yeah, so that's giving us a better result now. So what I can do is come back to my bitmap, and I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but I'm just accessing my bitmap via map, general, bitmap, and then you can locate the image file on your computer. So holding shift to copy that. What I'm going to do is put this one on a rotation. So W is like Z, so we'll just rotate it 90 degrees and we'll flip. And then we can apply these to our base color maps. And so those will be mixed together according to the noise. So now I'm getting less of a tiling effect than I was before. It's looking all right. 
another thing I can do is um, to reduce the strength of the bitmap, I can just mix it into a color. So to access a color value, I'm going to Maps, OSL. Um, then let's come to Values, Color Value. And then from there, you can select your color here. And to mix them together, I'm going to access Maps, OSL, Math Color, Add Color. So there are different blending options there, but I'm going to choose this one for now. And this will be my A, and this will be my B. And then the output of this will go into my base color map. And then you can just play with the strength of each um, to see how it's working out. And then you want to do the same thing down here. So holding shift to copy, holding shift to copy. So I could perhaps slightly vary the color in one to increase that change. But these are just um, all things that I can continue to test. Um, so let's test that out. And we should again be getting less strength from the tiling, but I'm getting even just that slight color um, variations really showing through. So that might be one of something I want to think about how it's um, rendering out. And I think I'm getting, so I haven't adjusted the roughness values here, so let's bring those right up. Yeah, so we're getting a better result now. Result now. In 2022, I now have another option via the OSL maps. Um, and this is something that I can put into my base color map. It's called a bitmap random tiling. Uh, this is available under maps, OSL, bitmap random tiling. And then I'm going to get, um, I just need a file input. So rather than a bitmap, I'm using maps, OSL, Um, and then I'm going to use a switcher, one of n file name, um, and then I can just locate a file. So I'm just going to use the UV grid, and I'll put that into my um, file name, and then I can. So I'll use that to test, and I'll put this the color RGB into my base color map. And you can see it's um, starting to apply the map to so that square um, and it's scaling and randomizing it and then wiggling together the intersections. And they're all parameters that I can adjust by the OSL inputs. So I think the main thing you want to focus on is the transform options. So the amount that it's rotating by. We're sitting here, so we want it to be as much as possible. So we'll take it from zero to 360. And then we want to be adjusting the scale as well. So let's take it from something like 0.6 to, um, to one. That's looking like it should give us a pretty good result. And then you can explore the other options such as the amount that it's wiggling between the between the textures. And you'll need to do render tests again just to make sure you're getting a, a really good output. Um, so then I'll take my I've got another um, OSL set up with the with that same grass texture that I was using before. I'm gonna take the output of that and I'll put it into my file name. And now when I take a a render of that I should see less tiling with a fair bit less work than I was having to go through earlier. So it's giving me an all right result with the um, with the texture that I selected, but I can continue to work with these um, parameters to get 
as good one as possible. Also, if I wanted to do some kind of layering like that, I can't do it at this stage. I'll have to do it at the later stage. But it should be a matter of just taking these two things. So. I'll just copy this one over, copy the color over, put the color into B, I'll put this color into A, and then I'll put my output into the, the base color map, and so then I've got the, the parameters that I can adjust here if I want to. And to see what kind of a result I get.